Welcome to part 3 of lecture 21 of aerospace propulsion. We left off with this question of what causes the inverse relationship between bypass ratio and T naught 4 over T naught 2. Basically, the more rapid rise in core pressure suction, which is basically caused by the, the increase in core pressure ratio, um, it is what drives this. So basically, m more flow is being uh, sucked into both the bypass and the core, but uh, it, as T naught 4 over T naught 2 goes up, more is getting sucked into the core faster than as is being sucked into the bypass. As a result, the bypass ratio drops. If you look at the fan working line um, off design, we can see quite large variations in mass flow, um, you know, down of, of at least sort of 30 to 35 percent um, over the practical range of T naught 4 over T naught 2. Um, so this is over the same range of T naught 4 over T naught 2 values. So up here would be at 6.52, over here would be at 4.48. Design is 6.11. Um, and of course, you'd have to superimpose this on a fan map to get the rotational speed variation. We would then look at the go into the core and look at the high pressure compressor. The working line there varies slightly less. Um, we see about uh, you know eighteen percent variation um, in mass flow, um, and this is exactly what we expect, right? There's a larger variation in, in inlet corrected mass flow for the low pressure system than there is for the high pressure system. And again, we can superimpose this on the compressor map to get the rotational speed variation. Part of the iterative solution process was finding the pressure ratio across the low pressure turbine, um, and that's shown here versus T naught 4 over T naught 2. Our design, we had uh, something like around just under 11. Um, since our propulsive nozzle is unchoked, we always need to solve for this pressure ratio. We can see that the curve is starting to level off as we get to high T naught 4 over T naught 2 values as the conditions approach choke. And if we would have kept going, eventually this would become a constant. Um, when, when the flow uh, in the core nozzle choked. Two other things to consider. First, let's talk about what happens when engines are operating statically. Um, right, so when we had our cruise Mach number at uh, a 0.78, and um, then we had peanut 2 over PA was 1.49, um, while if the engine's sort of sitting on a test bed, peanut 2 over PA is 1. Um, so the bypass nozzle is no longer going to be choked at FPR 1.5 when the engine is on a static test bed. There's a table in the text that compares operation at cruise with the static sea level conditions for the same T naught 4 over T naught 2. The most significant variation is the low pressure turbine pressure ratio that results. This goes down um, quite a bit uh, from 11.1 .1 at design to only 8.6 on a static test bed. So the key takeaway is that it's not possible to fully reproduce the flight conditions on a static test bed. So this is one of the reasons that flying test beds, which is basically an aircraft that you uh, are sticking the engine you're testing on as well as some other engines that you're not testing and that you know work well. Um, this is a thing that air, the large engine manufacturers typically have is at least one aircraft for this purpose. Um, or uh, pressurized wind tunnels where the, the stagnation pressures can be independently varied, um, can be used, um, and that the kinds of Mach numbers that we want to reach are, can be obtained. Um, those are actually so expensive to build that the flying test beds probably are a little bit more economical. The last topic we want to consider is what happens in three shaft engines. Um, so here, the LP spool only has the fan on the compression end, and the IP shaft has a compressor and a turbine, as does the HP shaft. So the intermediate pressure um, and high pressure uh, turbines are choked, um, but the inlet to the low pressure turbine is actually typically unchoked for this kind of uh, engine configuration. So that would complicate the design procedure, but um, it, it could still be done via an iterative process similar uh, to what was developed for the two engines. So rather than going through all the details of that, we just want to look at the main impact on the engine behavior. And the main difference is in the working lines for the compressors. The intermediate pressure compressor has to operate over a much bigger range of operating conditions than does the high pressure compressor, and you can see that here. 
right? The high pressure compressor has less than a 10% variation from its design point over sort of the practical uh, off design operating points, whereas for the IP compressor, it's at least 30%. The IP compressor has a pretty shallow working line, so it's not steep on this plot, um, and that means that we get a stronger push towards the surge line at lower mass flows. Um, so high incidence can basically lead to, to stall, whereas the high pressure compressor barely moves off design. So this shows you that the real challenge is in the, the IP compressor design for um, these three shaft engines.